Hi everyone, so today I wanted to talk about quizzes.next. You're going to find quizzes.next in the assignments tab of any course that you have. Here I just created a fake course for this. So if you click on assignments and then you click where it says add quizzes or tests, that's going to take you to the new type of quiz. Um, I know you see the old quiz right here. This is going to do a lot of similar things, but it's going to offer a lot of different types of questions. So I already started one, assignment one. If you go into settings here, it has a lot of different settings that are really good. So you can shuffle the questions, you can do one question at a time, which is a big thing for focusing the kids. You can require an access code, time limit, a calculator, multiple attempts. It has a lot of great settings that you can use for the students. So the first type of question I want to talk about is the hotspot question. So if I create a hotspot question, the biggest thing is that you need some sort of picture. Now that picture can be of whatever you need it to be. Here I have a picture of a graph I'll use. And hotspot is used to have the student click on something. So I'm going to tell the students click on part two of the graph. So if you see part two is right here, this line. So I need to tell the computer that this is the correct section. So I'm going to use a square for this one. And you click and drag and tell it where you want the student to press. So for me, I'm telling it that anywhere in here, if the student clicks there, they're correct in this one. You can use a circle. You can use a polygon. You can use whatever different type you need for this. Now we went into student view to show you how the students view this question. So it tells them click on part two. And they literally just have to click on it. It shows them where they clicked. Now this student would get the answer correct because they clicked within the space I gave them. If the student chose to click over here, it's going to mark it as incorrect because it's not part two. They just need to be somewhere in part two for it to work. Another great new type of question is matching. So that one would be right here. So a matching question has the students match the different types to one another. So here I did match the artist with the song. On the left, I have all the artists. On the right, I have all the songs. So when you do this, you're going to type the correct answer right across from it. If you want to add another pair, add it in. If you want to add a distractor, so that means a question or an answer that's not correct, you can add that in also. When the students see it, it's only going to show them one of the two options. So over here, it's only showing them the artist, and it creates a drop down for the students to pick which answer goes with the Beatles, which answer goes with Billy Joel, and so on. This is where that distractor comes in. You're just going to have an extra answer in the drop down. Categories is another type of question that I love. So it has the students drag and drop the options into the correct category. So here I have Marvel movies, and over here I have DC comic movies. If you want to add another answer, click Add an Answer. You can add a third category. You can also add a distractor, so an answer that's not in either category. So when we do it, it looks like this. You type the answers into the correct category. Now here in student view, you'll see how the students see it. They have the two categories, Marvel and DC, and they have to drag and drop the options into the correct category category. So if there's a distractor, there will just be an extra answer here that doesn't fall into either category. So they drag and drop until all their options are in the correct categories. The next one is one of my favorites. This is one where it is a great way to allow the students to type in their own answers, but easily have Canvas grade it for you. This one's fill in the blank. So if you add, it'll be fill in the blank right here. You create a question, so this one's a math question, solve the equation x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. And the statement where I want the students to fill in the blank is the solutions are x equals 5 and x equals negative 1. So right now there's no blanks for the students to fill in. So what you do is you highlight what you want them to have as a blank, and you can either click create a blank or click enter. 
and you can have multiple blanks in the same question. So this one will have two. Here you have multiple options. So you can leave it open entry so the students can type in anything they want. You can create a drop down where you'll create multiple options for them to have and they'll drop down and pick the correct option. And same idea with word bank. They'll have a word bank that they can choose different options from. With open entry, this text match becomes important. So for math, if it contains five, well, they could also type in negative five, which would be an incorrect answer, but it would mark it as correct. So close enough means that it's going to be close enough. Um, exact match means five is the only option they'll take. If you even put a space after it, it's not going to mark it as correct. Specify correct answers is one I'm going to use in a second, and then regular expression match. So the expressions, not the spaces or periods, any expression that's in there is what it's going to grade. Now for this one, I have to use specify correct answers because I have two options. They could type in negative one first, then five, or vice versa. So I have to show it that negative one is also an option for the first space. And the same thing for the second one. I have to tell it that five is also a correct answer in the second one. So this is what I see when the students see it. it will be blanks where I told it to put blanks. So X equals, then they can type in their answer. X equals, then they type in their other answer. If you had chosen drop down, then there would be a drop down box right here. So my students would type five and negative one into the spaces. As you can see, this also has a lot of the classics. You can create a true-false question. You can have a short response question where the students type in their answer. Multiple choice, multiple answer is a multiple correct answer problem or a select all that apply. Um, Ordering is a great one if you want the students to put something from in a certain order, so oldest to newest, highest to lowest, whatever you choose. If we do look at multiple choice here, You can add more answers, and the biggest thing you can do with multiple choice is shuffle the choices so that it's never going to be in the same order between the students, so it's harder for them to give answers. It's easier for you. That way you know that the answers are changing from each time, and they can't just tell other students that the answer is A. And just like you can shuffle the choices, shuffling the questions is another great way to make sure that students are all on different problems and that there's minimal cheating, there's minimal um, chance of them giving answers to one another. So that's another thing in settings. Well, that's Quizzes Next. Uh, there might be a few little changes to Quizzes Next in the near future because they are slowly but surely making it better. But for right now, there's the big stuff.